Dr. Pawinda Kaur, uh, who is an Associate Professor and the Director of DNA Zoo Australia at the Faculty of Sciences uh, in the University of Western Australia. Dr. Pawinda Kaur leads an innovative translational, research, uh, translational genomics research program that aims uh, to translate fundamental science into ready-to-use solutions across the agricultural and medical sectors. Her DNA lab team enables research to span the spectrum of scientific activities beyond the traditional lab-to-landscape model using new age technologies such as CRISPR, single cell and 3D genomics. With DNA Zoo Australia, she is on a mission to provide genomic empowerment to unique Australian biodiversity, facilitating conservation efforts for the threatened and endangered species. She has made substantial contributions to the field of biotechnology and was appointed as UWA's Be Inspired for Agricultural and Environmental Biotechnology in 2019. Her studies tracking genomic variation to breed low methanogenic forages in Australia provide a new paradigm for reducing the environmental footprint of ruminants. She has been honored by the prestigious Science and Innovation Award for Young People in Agriculture, Fisheries and Forestries uh, by the Australian Academy of Sciences in 2013. A joint venture between UWA and the, world, the world's biggest pasture seed company, PGG Rats and Seeds, resulted in demonstrating the impact at the paddock level. Uh, also, DNA Zoo's innovative work developments won the Microsoft AIs for Earth Award for 2019 to 2020. We are happy to have her with us today. We are lucky and honored to have with us a very distinguished scientist, Dr. Parvinda Kaur. Uh, Ma'am, uh, you're a very successful researcher having achieved so much at a young age. Uh, please share your journey so far as a plant scientist. Uh, so, Ma, thank you so much for having me today and for the kind words you've said. Um, I think all I have to say is that it's no shortcut to hard work. Um, as you can say, it's, it takes a lot and a lot of work. Um, but it does also take um, strategic st strategy, like in terms of like where you've got to have clear questions. You just can't be mucking around. And, you know, it's very easy to get lost in, in a lot of work and not be productive. So what I always say to my students is it's always a good idea to have a clear and clear direction but also having very clear hypothesis that exactly because we're doing science here so if you do not know what you're chasing um it's not going to be very productive and as i also said that um mentors mentors and your networks are really really important it is as important as doing the hard work that you gotta be connected to the right people who can show you the right path but at the same time also mentor you learning from somebody's other experiences and mistakes save you from doing repeating the same in your life and wasting you know that much amount of time which you could have used to do something you know different or more productive so find yourself a mentor find someone who's got the same passion like you and can guide you on that journey it's it's it could be a very fascinating and productive journey if you've got that mentor right so that's I would highly advise people to find a mentor. Thank you. Um, in the era of uh, big data and artificial intelligence, how do we progress with respect to modern research and its field application? So modern research is no more the same, like, you know, um, just screening a few cultivars for one particular trade or just go and grow some things in the field and see how they're doing. It's, 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 it's a lot more than that. As I said, like, you know, probably we are moving into a future where, you know, most of the agricultural research might be just in silico. I mean, because we do not have mm -hmm. the amount of resources to grow such big field trials and things. But whatever you do, it's not going to completely replace that. But whatever you do, basically, there will be so much amount of data that will be generated from those few field trials that could be applied across a number of ways in many creative ways to, to do much more than what we could ever think of. And that's why the cloud, the power of cloud uh, research clouds is coming, you know, because you can share data so fast, you can transfer data so fast, you can 
you can connect across the globe with people uh, right. mm -hmm. basically you can harvest much more so and and it's you know remote sensing in agriculture high performance computing in agriculture able to do like things which only could happen in plants now we can do that we can take that mechanism and put it in the yeast you know synthetic biology mm -hmm. and you can make the yeast do the thing which you had to grow thousands of plants for mm -hmm. so right. i mean all these things this this is this is i think this is where the future is taking us and it's very mm -hmm. exciting Definitely. Uh, according to you, which sectors of plant science research and agriculture will prosper in the near future? Um, it's a, um, I think it's a, it's a very hard question and very hard to answer in a few words. But I would, uh, as I said, I, I think it's, um, it's data, it's coding. Uh, it's, it's, it's probably not going to be the simple degrees like which we used to do, like I do a degree in plant biotechnology or I just do a degree in plant biology. It's got to be combined things like, you know, computer sciences and plant biotechnology or, you know, agricultural technology, business value to technology, development of biotechnology. So, we, so we, we've been thinking about all these things that what exact things we should be offering in terms of skills to our students, the next generation students. and. I'm, I'm very um, glad to announce that you, this semester UWA has announced a number of double degrees, uh, which students can, can explore, like, you know, combining, like, for example, masters in biotechnology, which I teach, we have, it's a combination of a unit where we offer the business and biotechnology together, because, you know, we see these biotechnologies as the budding entrepreneurs. So they've got to have a little bit of a knowledge of how to develop or set up a new business or a startup. So all these things, you know, you, you've got to learn while you study. So these are the skills I would, I, I would highly recommend students to look for. Yeah. So interesting. Uh, Ma'am, um, uh, I would love, we would all love to know uh, how you build your career as a scientist. We would love to know more about you. Um, how I build my career. Look, I've, I've actually let the life happen to me and it has taken me places. I studied agriculture from, from Punjab Agricultural University. I was a 2000 batch, um, 2004, I completed my bachelor's uh, in agriculture with an honors degree. I specialized in plant protection because I was always fascinated that, you know, how the plants are able to handle all the kind of insects, the weather and, you know, diseases that all come to them. They're out there facing everything and how do they do that? So that was kind of like my curiosity, which took me to that degree. After that, I you have to pick up a specialization. So I picked up entomology, studied insects because insects, insect pest specifically. Mm -hmm. um, University of Western Australia had PhD scholarships, which I applied for, and I came here to study plant pathology. And after that, I even went to Telethon Kids Institute and stuff, like worked in the immunological area. So I think what I have, I haven't been very strategic, but I think the way life happened to me, it has been very strategic. And the, the continuous thread, which I would say has been running across my passions has been DNA. And I think that's, that's an interesting thread that also connects all different forms of life that exist on the planet. So, so that's exactly where, how my career has been. It has taken me places from pretty much every life form on the, on the planet. And I'm very, very, very grateful for that, that journey that happened to me. I did, really did not choose it or did not plan it. So beautiful to hear from you. And I'm definitely excited. And after uh, watching your uh, presentation, first of all, I was very excited to visit Perth. <laughs> it's so beautiful. <laughs> Please. Yeah, like we, we love to have visitors here. Yes. <laughs> it's beautiful weather here as well. So, yeah. And if you're passionate about agriculture, definitely look yeah. at this background. This is wheat fields in WA. We are the golden wheat fields. Oh, wow. <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> Okay, and, and uh, we hope to uh, hear from you again soon in the future uh, if you have um, new uh, scientific discoveries and we will love to hear from you again. Thank you so much uh, for being here today.